Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. First of all, I just want to thank you so much for all your comments. Please keep them coming since it really, really encourages me to make more of these videos. I also want to help you guys learn as much as you can. So I've actually created a dedicated Facebook page where you can post your work or post any questions you might have for the community to answer. We're all on this XR journey together. So please like and subscribe and join our Facebook page so we can continue to make cool shit together. Anyway, here's your video. So far, we've learned how to use the init function to initialize components and how to use event listeners. But what about the other lifecycle methods? Today, we're going to be looking at update and tick. Let's start with the documentation as usual. It says that the update function is called whenever the component property is changed, including at the beginning of its life cycle. So in conclusion, there's only two ways which the update function can be called. The first time is when the entity which the component has been placed into is born. And the second time is whenever set attribute has been used. Let's prove this. If you go back on your project where we left off, I've just deleted all the console.logs just to clean things up. So now I want to add an update function. And for this first part, I just want to prove that it gets called after in. All right, so I'm going to put update here, function, I'm going to print console.log updated, and that's all. Okay, and then this is the init function, and I'm going to put a console.log somewhere just to prove that this should print out after this. Console.log initialized. And just to keep things clean, I don't want to put it just anywhere random. I'll put it right at the bottom of the init function. All right, so now let's run this. So now you got initialized, updated. Okay. So now we've proven that it works. And as expected, there's two printouts because there's two objects. So these two objects has the same component in it. So therefore, it should print out exactly the same thing. OK, this update function gets called when the entity is born. But what about after set attribute? So if you look carefully at our code, you can see that we've already got a set attribute here. But why didn't it print updated twice? That's what we'd expect, right? Because we said that it should work after every time we call set attribute. Well, not completely true. We have to call set attribute on the same component, so on this component before update is called. OK, so let's continue to prove this. All right, so I'm going to go obj oops, dot src element dot set attribute. And I'm going to call upon itself. So I'm going to say Instead of position, I want to make it blood. And then I'm going to make blood type going to make it B. So when I click on each box, it should change the blood type of that box to B type. And just to prove it, actually, I'm going to put it here. So console.log this.data.blood type. This should print out the blood type after the update. OK, so to prove that it's changed, I want to I want to show what the blood type was before the update. And it turns out the the update function actually takes an argument and the argument is the old data. So I'm going to chuck the argument in old data and then I'm going to print it out. It's console.log old data plus all data dot blood type. OK, hopefully that should work. OK, so just as expected, um, you've got the update being called once for each object. And when you click on it, cool. So old data, AB type, and then after it's updated, it's been changed to B type. So now we've proven that it works. But then what happens when we click on it again? Nothing. Nothing else gets printed out. And that's because the new data is equal to the old data. So 
the update function never gets called. Pretty efficient, huh? The next function that we're going to be looking at is tick. It's used to simulate action that needs to happen continuously. So if we compare that to the human body, some of the things that our body needs to do automatically is to breathe, to keep the heart beating and to blink. According to the docs, this tick function runs at 60 to 120 times per second. Let's give it a go now. I'm going to use this tick method and I'm going to use it to make the object spin. Okay. If you're new to 3JS, don't freak out. I'll explain this to you soon. I'm going to go this.l.getObject3D mesh dot rotation dot y plus equals 0 0.01 okay yeah there we go okay then what did i just write as it turns out a entity in a frame has a reference to its own 3JS object. So remember how I said a few lessons back how A-Frame is actually built on top of 3JS, JavaScript, and WebGL. So essentially all entities are these things called 3JS objects. And these 3JS objects have their own parts. And what I've written here is the mesh essentially is the body of the 3D object. And what we're telling it to do is, hey, change your rotation by 0.01 every single frame. If you imagine the cube just getting updated at like 120 frames per second, it's gonna look like that it's spinning. But anyway, we'll keep this lesson short. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I'll see you next week for the next one. Hey guys, just a quick update. I've been super, super busy pivoting my business to focus more on AR and VR. There's gonna be a lot of new stuff coming, so please hit subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated. Building the XR community on this channel really means a lot to me and brings me a lot of joy. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.